Uh, interesting action today, Steve Weiss. We, we turned negative on the Bank of Canada raising rates. Yields shot up a little bit. I thought we started to take a little bit of a turn more negative on Mary Daly. I thought she was, I thought she was pretty uh, aggressive in, in her view for where rates are going um, from here. And maybe you can point to some other factors, which I'll get to in just a second. But new month, same volatility or what? I believe it is, and actually I foresee uh, the volatility increasing. When Rich Stapstein came on last week and said he was selling, that he was more negative, and I put, so, put on some exposure, uh, I said I'm even more negative than I was because how sanguine everybody seemed to be. But June 1 starts the pairing of the Fed balance sheet. So at first it's going to be $17.5 billion, $30 billion, then it's going to double in three months. That's going to tighten credit. It's going to tighten monetary conditions, and that's going to lead to increased volatility. So I think now that we have May over, now that we're into this, going to a Fed meeting on June 14th and 15th, I believe it is, that we're going to see increased volatility. So I'm back to where I was in terms of my positions. Slightly higher, actually, but back to where I was. As I mentioned in the note to producers last night, sold you did. my VOO, the SMH, and the Qs. You did. So, yeah, last night, I don't know, it was like four something. You sent an email uh, to the folks here and said you did sell the positions that you put on just last week. So, I mean, I think you made it clear at the time that you were a renter, if you will, uh, not an owner of those positions, and, and you gave those up. I, I also want to discuss, Liz, these comments from Jamie Dimon because much was made a week or so ago when he made some comments, I think it was at the Analyst Day, Investor Day, shareholder meeting, or whatever it was, that were perceived to be pretty positive, which at the time, I was like, nah, I mean, I don't know. It doesn't sound like he is overly bullish, though the market went up that day because financials went up that day, and everybody was putting themselves in a pretzel to try and say how positive he sounded. Well, he didn't sound that way today. Here's what Jamie Dimon said. You know, I said there's storm clouds. That's what he said last week. You know, I said there's storm clouds, but I'm going to change it. It's a hurricane. You better brace yourself. J.P. Morgan is bracing ourselves. <clears throat> excuse me. And we're going to be very conservative with our balance sheet. That doesn't sound like a guy who's overly bullish about the environment, Liz, that we are in. And I also think those comments may be contributing to what you're seeing today. Yeah, it certainly sounds like a bit of a pivot from him, whether it was misunderstood last time uh, or, or maybe not a pivot at all. But I think what CEOs need to do and what Jamie is probably doing right is being conservative with their financial statements, being conservative with their guidance. We heard in first quarter earnings season almost everybody coming out and being conservative. It sounded like everybody was negative and they guided down. But the reality of it is for the second half of the year, earnings probably do need to come down a little bit. The expectations do need to come down a little bit. And as we get this economic data that continues to roll in, some of it's strong, but there's a decent amount of it that has begun to crack. And we needed that to happen as well for inflation to cool off. Now, I agree with Steve in the sense that we probably see volatility for the first half of June and maybe a decent portion of June because we're not going to have any new information that calms us down before then. I think we need to get through a couple more Fed meetings. We need to get through a couple more CPI prints. And we really need that GDP print in July to find out whether or not we are actually in a recession. But I think that there is a decent chance in July, once we have some more of that information, that we can relax a little bit and things don't look nearly as dour as they do today. John and Jerry, what are you doing? What are you trading? How are you trading this market right now? Um, I, I'm, uh, I've got an awful lot of cash, Scott, as you know. We've talked about it, so I won't belabor that. Um, I am trading an awful lot of option positions. Um, CRM was one I talked about with our Dominic Chu yesterday. Worked out very nicely, um, mainly because, Scott, I think just like Jim Cramer has said, uh, there are some stocks that have just been hammered uh, to the point where you can make a bold call like Jim likes to do and like he's done successfully. Um, so whether it's um, Meta or whether it's Google, in my case it was CRM, I thought after coming down from 330 to 165, that represented a great opportunity. So I put on an options spread in there. I put on stock. 
both worked out very well. I've now rolled up to the 185, 200 call spread out in July, taken off all my stock. But that's the way I'm doing it, Scott. I'm really finding some opportunities, primarily in beaten up stocks. Every once in a while, uh, something on the put side shows up, and I'll trade that as well. But I'm really trading. I'm.